Hello friends, welcome back to Civil Engineering Mastery. Generally, footing serves as substructural elements which transfer the loads coming from the superstructure to the soil safely. There are many types of footings, but mostly we have confused about eccentric footing. So friends, today we are going to discuss about what is concentric footing and what is eccentric footing and how to find out the eccentricity about axis of the footing and what are all the causes of eccentric footing and also practical cases of eccentric footing. First, let us discuss about the concentric footing. The basic concept is whatever the load coming from the column will transfer to the area of the footing. The column load should always act at the center of the footing. So here it is very important to note that the center of gravity of the column load should always coincide with the center of gravity of the footing. Okay. Here the column load is acting at the center of the footing. So the pressure distribution below the footing will be uniform. Okay. Now let's discuss about the behavior of footing slab under soil pressure. Soil pressure which is acting as a downward pressure, right? So the soil pressure below the footing will tend to bend the footing slab upward. Imagine like a saucer type. So the footing slab will tend to bend like this due to the downward pressure. So in order to avoid that, we are providing reinforcement at the bottom of the footing as a bottom mesh. Next one is eccentric footing. You can see here the center of gravity of the footing and center of gravity of the column is not coinciding here. In this case also this is the center of gravity of footing and uh, here is the center of gravity of column. So both are not coinciding. So if this case of footing we call it as a eccentric footing. Okay. So here we have two cases in eccentric footing. One is uniaxial eccentricity and biaxial eccentricity. So let's discuss how to differentiate the uniaxial eccentricity and biaxial eccentricity. First one is uniaxial eccentricity. In uniaxial eccentricity, we have two cases eccentricity along x axis and eccentricity along y axis. First, let's see eccentricity along x axis. You can see here the column load which is acting on the footing is moving away from the CG of the footing in the direction of X. Okay, so that distance we can call it as eccentricity distance about X axis. Next eccentricity along Y axis. So here the column load is moving in the direction of Y from the CG of the footing. From the 3D image you can make it clear the column is moved away from the CG of the footing in the Y direction. So in uniaxial eccentricity, the footing will be eccentric about either in the x direction or in the y direction. Next one is biaxial eccentricity. In biaxial eccentricity, the footing is eccentric about both x and y axis. You can see from this figure. Here, the column column CG is moved away from the footing CG in X axis as well as in the Y axis. Okay, so this is the eccentricity due to X axis and this is the eccentricity due to Y axis. Now, let me show you in drawing how practically we are getting eccentric footings. Here is the excavation plan. This is the side boundary and we have concentric footings here. And coming to this corner, we have one eccentric footing. Due to some unavoidable situations, we need to provide column at the side boundary. So because of that, we are getting the eccentric footing. Hope now you all will be able to identify whether it is a uniaxial eccentric footing or biaxial eccentric footing. Obviously, it is a uniaxial eccentric footing since the column is moved away from the CG of the footing in the X direction. And here we have one eccentric footing which is also uniaxial and coming to this corner we have one corner column. So this is a biaxial eccentric footing. The column is moved away from the CG of the footing in the X direction as well as in the Y direction. Next let's discuss about the causes of eccentric footing. 
as we have discussed earlier if the load if the load is acting at the center of the footing then the pressure distribution below the footing will be uniform but if the load is eccentric then the pressure distribution below the footing will not be uniform it causes unequal settlement and uplift of the footing how do we design the eccentric footing one is by providing the combined footing and one is by providing the strap beam so here is the property line the column is located at the property line this we call it as edge footing this edge footing we are combining with the adjacent concentric footing together we can make it as a combined footing and here this edge footing we are connecting to the adjacent concentric footing by providing the strap beam so this is the second option so friends it is very important to design the eccentric footing properly since the footing is the major important substructural element the loss of footing due to the loss of surface contact may cause the catastrophic failure of any building so it is very very important to take care of the design of eccentric footing so friends hope you all like this video please do comment and subscribe for more videos thank you for watching